Good morning. I'm sitting outside, drinking my coffee, <clears throat> trying to get the day situated in my head. Um, I've been AWOL for a couple of days, and uh, I've uh, been dealt another gut-wrenching kind of personal blow that I've had to kind of uh, take a take a pause to accept and I'm not going to reveal what that is at this time uh, maybe maybe at another time I will but um, so it has kind of stopped me in my tracks at least um, for the for a couple of days and you know when something like that happens you just you, you got to keep moving you got to keep going forward and so today I'm gonna do what I can to pick myself up and start forward motion again as slow as it may be and uh, all of this loss and change in my life has given me pause and asked me to think about like what are my goals what are my life goals and I don't know I don't know what they are um, but I have thought about putting together a bucket list, which is something I've never done before. I know that even millennials have bucket lists, and I have never put together a bucket list, and it's for two reasons. One is, um, I find that a lot of us Gen Xers don't know what we want. And the second reason is fear that I won't accomplish any of it. Are you driven by fear? Are your decisions based on fear? Because I know that I've struggled with having made decisions based on fear or making no decision because I'm fearful. I don't want to live like that. So I've decided to make a bucket list that includes things that are maybe nearly impossible for me to do. Um, but as long as they're authentically things that I would want to do, then they're going to go on the list. Some of them will be small and easily achievable, and some of them will be hard and, and unattainable, probably. But while I'm thinking about making that list, I've kind of made an eBay reseller list, um, a reseller bucket list. I think that you should have one. If you're going to be selling on eBay for the long haul, if that's your main hobby or your main income, you should have an eBay bucket list or a reseller bucket list. It doesn't have to all to have all to do with eBay, but so I'm going to share some of those items on my bucket list a little later with you. And uh, I'll show you some of the things that sold. I've had some interesting sales over the past couple of days. Um, I had one sale in 48 hours and then yesterday I picked up a couple more so I'm gonna go pick those up at the storage unit after I finish my coffee here and um, I am going to bring those back to get those ready to ship and I will show you what I sold pretty interesting stuff I'm also going to catch my eBay business around the the neck and get a handle on it you know you know, I was thinking about that word handle because I was watching an advert for um, Smokey and the Bandit, which is a great movie. And it's going to be in theaters next month. A few select theaters. I think you should go see it if you've never seen it or if you have seen it and you love it. Go see it on the big screen again. But anyway, um, he said that's his handle. And I thought about that. Why do they call your name your, your CB name or, or other it doesn't have to be CB your handle I thought about that for a moment and I figured out it's because that's how they get a hold of you by your handle so anyway <laughs> um, I'm gonna drink my coffee I'm gonna go get some stuff I'm going to show you what I sold we'll talk about the eBay bucket list and, uh, and, and my bucket list is kind of short right now, and, and I may add some things to it, but I think it's something you should consider. 
is having a personal bucket list and having an eBay bucket list. And um, then I'll come back and uh, who knows what we'll talk about. Um, one thing I did want to share with you, sorry for the shaky cam, is look at my mint. Isn't that gorgeous? And also, you can see my tomato has a couple of blooms on it. And I'm pretty happy about that. So, you know, progress. It's all about progress and growth. Look how easy it is for growth when you have the right ingredients. Maybe we need to talk about what the right ingredients are for growth. Personal growth. Professional growth. Maybe that's another video. But anyway, I'll be back later. You guys stick around. Okay, I'm going to show you what I sold, like, over the last... 48 hours and then there's a short video clip that I'll show you that from sales from a couple of days ago um, that I made but I just didn't finish and produce and edit and all that so um, let's jump right into this so these are something that I bought because I thought those are pretty wow those are pretty I paid about a dollar or two for these and they're just ceramic finials there's nothing like fantastic about them other than they're pretty and um, um, they're kind of cool in that sometimes they look chocolate brown and sometimes they have a green cast to them and I did um, describe that in the description but um, I had these for a while because you know there's there was no really what no real way to do comps on these just because there's no maker's name these are probably mass-produced from China but I bought them because they're pretty okay um, anyhow, uh, ended up selling these for $22.75 plus shipping for a total of $32.80 and we'll just bubble wrap those real good and throw them in a box and, uh, that will be that. The next thing I sold and I have had this for quite some time and I pick these up every once in a while. Um, they typically are very long tail, but they do sell. This is a Mercado um, pasta maker. It is made in Italy. I don't think this one had been used at all. Um, or maybe it had. I don't remember. Yeah. But it's in really good condition. Um, but anyhow, um, I bought this for, I think, for about five, six bucks. And um, I end up selling this for $39.50 for uh, plus shipping for a total of $51.99. Um, this is something that I've had for about probably 60 days, I'm guessing. It's this huge, beautiful wood bowl. I mean, this thing is gorgeous. And I paid six bucks for this at Goodwill. And I remember thinking, gosh, if that doesn't sell, who cares? I'll keep this. Um, but ended up getting an offer yesterday for like $26. I had it priced at $59.99. And I'm like, no way. Well, I take $26 for this humongous salad bowl. There's just no way. Um, so uh, I counter offered at 48, which was $12 off my regular price. And um, they accepted, um, plus shipping for a total of $71.32. Now, part of the reason that this is um, so expensive to ship is just sheer size, but it also weighs about four pounds, three, four pounds. So. Um, you know, this is probably going across the country. I think it's going to Cali, Cali, but, um, yeah, so I'm happy. I'm happy this sold for so much. I'm, I'm sad that it sold at all because I would have liked to keep it, but there's two of us in this household. So I don't think we need this much salad ever. So there was that. And then the last thing that I sold was this Dietz lantern. It's, um, like a railroad lantern and this one um, was one that my brother gave to me to sell and um, there's the the brand this one had not been used so no fuel smell no smoke in the chimney uh, or the globe um, the wick is brand new I mean this thing is pristine um, this is not one of the old ones from like 1907 or whatever I mean it's stamped with that date but this is not made then um, this is later this is probably 40s or 50s, I'm guessing, um, based on the materials and the design because it's not made of, uh, it's not completely copper. It's got this galvanized tin uh, with a copper tank 
And um, I did do quite a bit of research um, on this. And um, I had it priced much, much higher because I couldn't find one exactly like this in this condition. So, you know, when I don't know exactly the price point, then I, um, I'll, I go high. And I was at about $400 on this thing. And over time, I have gradually reduced and reduced. And I had it on sale for about $225. And I had somebody come across with a best offer of $185. And I decided to just take it. Um, I can live with that price. So um, $185 for this plus shipping um, at a, was a $196.95. So I'm going to wrap this up um, really good. And um, it should be fine. I'm not going to take the globe out. I just think that will increase the risk that it will break. I'm just going to shove some bubble wrap up around it and then bubble wrap the entire thing. So um, yeah, that'll be going gone. I think I've had that for probably three months. Um, I sold a, um, a uh, tackle bag of lures for my brother um, earlier in the week, but I uh, there was a problem with the buyer's address. So eBay was telling me this, this street, this particular street is not in this city. And it was in some podunk place probably in Louisiana or something. So it's not like um, you know, and it was a weird street name. So I could have changed it to the correct city, but I was, you know, I lose my buyer protection and that was a hundred dollar sale. Um, I sent the buyer a message, no response. And they only had like two or three feedback. Um, I even tried to call their phone number that was on file that was disconnected. So, um, I just had to cancel the sale and I'm going to relist that item today. And hopefully, hopefully, um, they will see it and get my message and buy it again. I, though I find that's probably very light, unlikely, but, um, we'll see. Uh, anyway, let's, this is the, the clip of what I sold, um, a couple of days ago, and then we're going to come back and talk about the bucket list. Hey guys, good morning. Um, thought I'd show you a couple of things that sold, um, overnight and, yeah, no, no big deal. Just a couple of things. Slow sales are slowing down, but they haven't stopped. And, uh, I'm not complaining because, um, I'll take any sale at this point. So, um, just two things to show you. Um, one was, is these mellow smellow, um, stickers. I paid $27, I think, I think for all of them. And I had quite a bit. That sounds expensive. Maybe I didn't pay that much for them. But anyway, um, so I've already sold about $100 worth of them. And I got an offer yesterday for all of the ones that I had left. This is about $200 worth um, for $90 shipped. And you know what? I'm going to take that um, because I don't want to sell these like a pack of two at a time. So I'm just going to get rid, rid of all of them for $90. And, um, the other thing I sold, I got this in a lot of other stuff for $2 and it is this VTEC go, go train, smart train, um, little looks almost looks like a bus, but it's a train with a little trailer and there's I don't have the part that goes in there, but I sold this for $19.99 plus shipping for a total of $27.19. So that's all I've got this morning so far. Okay, so um, I thought we'd go over like my reseller bucket list um, since uh, we talked about all the stuff that sold and everything. So um, yeah, I've thought about this and of course this is just related to reselling and YouTube, just one of them is related to YouTube, but um, I thought we would go over this real quickly and then think about what your, what your, re, you know, reselling bucket list would look like and, and what your personal bu bucket list would look like. And, and if you haven't created one like me, because you're afraid to, um, get over that, let it go because we do, we don't do so many things because we're afraid of what might happen. And it's just a list, you know, it's not the be all end all. If you don't get everything done, then you don't lose. Let's face it. You're going to die anyway. 
So <laughs> you may as well have some, some fun and some accomplishments and uh, some memories along the way. All right, so the first thing on my uh, reseller bucket list is um, I want to find a high ticket a high ticket item that is worth over a thousand dollars. And I know that a lot of resellers do this regularly. I mean, this is part of their um, normal, um, you know, business, but not me. Um, I think maybe the highest items that I've sold are probably in the four hundred dollar range, and um, I'd like to find an item over a thousand dollars. Another thing that I would like to source that I haven't come across, but a lot of people do, a lot of people do, is Tiffany jewelry. Um, I would, you know, I'd like to come across some Tiffany jewelry and resell that, or maybe keep it, but probably resell it. Um, another thing would be a high-end art piece. I love art. I love art. Um, so I'd like to find, you know, a really nice piece, something kind of, you know, at least worth a few hundred dollars. Um, and I do come across some really pretty art. Um, I've got a watercolor upstairs that I just love. Um, that's not going anywhere because I love it so much, but it's not by anyone famous and it's not worth much. But so I'd like to find a high end art piece. Um, another thing that I would like to do is expand into mostly wholesale. And I say mostly in that if I had 2000 listings, um, I would want like 500 of those to be about thrift arbitrage and then maybe 1500 to be kind of like wholesale, um, buying pallets and doing, um, shelf pulls and returns and that sort of thing. So I'd like to get into more of that. Um, although I do love thrifting. I really do. Um, another goal that I have is to get 5,000 subscribers on YouTube which is not directly related to my eBay reselling, but it does make me happy. So um, I put that on the list as well. Um, 10,000 feedback on eBay would be wonderful. So that's a, a goal that I have on my bucket list. Um, a million dollars in sales. And there are resellers that have hit this. And I probably, if I do this, you know, if I continue for the next 20 years, I probably probably will hit 1 million in sales, but, um, anything's possible. So, um, yeah, I'd like to hit 1 million in sales. I'm at about 30,000, 25,000, something like that right now. Um, I would like to have employees in a warehouse and a lot of these things tie together. If I'm doing a, a lot of wholesale, if I'm working toward that 10,000 feedback, if I'm working th toward that million dollars in sales, I probably will need at some point employees in a warehouse, warehouse but that's not anytime soon. Um, number nine, I would like to buy a new car with cash from my eBay proceeds um, because that would be feel like an accomplishment, you know, to, to be able to just go lay the money down and buy a new car. And then number 10 would be to fund a trip, um, abroad on eBay proceeds. So, I mean, that's a much smaller goal than buying a car. Um, but yeah, I'd like to, to go back overseas and have that completely pay for by eBay proceeds. So, um, I'm really going to have to get my button gear to, um, to be able to mark some of these things off the list. I mean, these are most of these are kind of lofty and uh, will take me a long time to mark off. And I may have to um, add to this list to give myself some more um, immediate goals so that this doesn't get too stale. But this was just 10 things that I came up with that I would like to achieve um, as I go along my eBay career. So um, let me know in the comments below what something on that would, might be on your eBay um, or reselling bucket list. Um, it'd be interesting to see what your ideas are. All right. Um, I have dinner guests coming tonight, so I've got a, a ton of work to do. So I am going to sign off for today. But uh, remember, the dream works when you do. So keep dreaming and keep working, and I'll see you the next time.